and welcome once again everyone this is warlord i have not produced a video in a while uh but that's because i've been busy with war of the ring uh during the war of the ring rohan campaign which just ended uh this past fall uh but we're on the road again and we're going to another convention this time we're going to the nova open which is actually not too far from where i'm based out of and uh, I have been asked to put on a demonstration War the Ring game. So uh, a little bit about the Nova Open. It is a pop culture uh, gaming convention. Started out as a uh, Blood Bowl tournament to raise money for charity. One of the organizers, I believe Mother, had cancer and they wanted to raise money for cancer awareness. So it is now uh, one of the largest tabletop pop culture conventions uh, in North America. Uh, it's expanded to 40k and to X-Wing and Infinity, Malfo, most of the big uh, you know, pop culture games that are on the scene right now. Uh, but this year for the first time there's going to be a Lord of the Rings Hobbit strategy battle game tournament going on. So uh, I've been asked to put on a War of the Ring demonstration which I'll be doing later on tonight. And uh, while I'm there, I'll just go around and uh, talk to some of the people who are there and also uh, give uh, a good layout of what type of convention this is. So stay tuned. All right, and here we are at the Hyatt in Crystal City in Arlington, Virginia. And we are coming, arriving at the Nova Open. And here is the check-in and registration. Okay, and these are some entries into the painting competition, as you can see. Most of these are 40K oriented. There's a couple, looks to be like a historical Renaissance figure there. Uh, and there's a really cool looking Tyranid, some sort of like LED. And Eldar, very well. Brush painted. And here's the most famous dog in all of Nova. Relaxing. He looks a little hot. And there's a small vendor area over there. As you can see, uh, not as big as Historicon or other events as far as uh, vendors go. But most of them sell the same thing, so they're all selling either Games Workshop, Privateer Press, some of the other pop culture games. There's a couple independent games here. Um, Fantasy Flights here, actually, they have, uh, they're not independent, they have, are here uh, promoting the new Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Uh, so if any of you guys play that, that is going to be compatible with the old X-Wing. So. And then here we go into the Lord of the Rings Hobbit area. With no movement. A nice picture of Smog. Very well done. And here's the main gaming area for Lord of the Rings. As you can see, today they're doing the Grand Tournament. That's very nice. Minus Mordor, Witch King. So it looks to be uh, 17 tables playing uh, Lord of the Rings strategy battle game. This one with a nice Osgiliath setting. So yeah, I was talking to some people last night. Uh, There's some people who came from Canada uh, to come play in this. Uh, there are some people who came from Great Britain, uh, from the Great British Hobbit League, if you subscribe to that channel as well. Another interesting looking ring, right? 
Not as cool as seeing me be popular in this game. This is some really cool eagles. I, I gotta try and get a picture of these eagles. I know these guys are trying to play, but let me try and zoom in here. Let me get on the other side. Look at that. Looks like an American bald eagle. That is way cool. Well, here's a very interesting train, kind of with a Gondor theme. Really cool highlighting on that. There's Sheila up there. That's a really good hand of Sheila. Alright. Alright, and here's some of the uh, train pieces that were done by Wright Train. Uh, Wright Train is a uh, train company uh, based out of Connecticut, and uh, they do any type of train board that you want, uh, you can have uh, custom boards built, uh, but they almost exclusively do Lord of the Rings. Here is the helm seat, which looks way much better than my helm seat. All right. uh, this is, looks to be a, a Lothlorien Fletch, which is really cool. I really like that idea. Uh, see that? And this is the Lake Town board. And this is Sauron's Mace and Hobbit Town. Look at this Hobbit Town. This is really, really well done. I mean, all the way down to, you see where these, you know, strings are, where they can kind of slide down in the ropes. Now you could do your own, like, stop motion movie in this thing. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's almost like Peter Jackson's camera going this way and that way. Cool. All right, we're going to go. Uh, we're going to take a look at some of the other events going on. Uh, Star Wars, 40k. Before uh, I have to go ahead and set up for War of the Ring. All right, this is really cool. I don't know what game system this is. This is another right terrain piece. Uh, appears to be some sort of steampunk type of thing. I want to say for Mal folks, it's a steampunk type of game. And then here is, you got to see this, the Star Destroyer. This is absolutely awesome. Uh, they have some of the capital ships from the, I don't know if this is from Ar Armada or X-Wing. I want to say this is for X-Wing just because of the scale. A trillion freighter, but I mean, this is, this is absolutely awesome. I mean, look at the LED lighting. All right, all the way through the back. I mean, you, you could almost have an X-Wing game on this thing. Um, but I think the problem is is that uh, a lot of the models would just slide off. All right, and let's walk down this way. We've got some X-Wing going on. I like X-Wing, I play it. Um, not really a competitive player, so that's why I don't really play in these tournaments, but some of the new ships are kind of cool. From the expanded universe, and I was talking to the guys from Fantasy Flight yesterday, and they said that the uh, Star Wars: The Force Awakens is going to be compatible with the X-wings. So all these uh, ships that you see here, uh, you can still use with the new models coming out for the uh, Force Awakens. And here it is. This is the uh, X-wing. Force Awakens models that just came out uh, just yesterday, and we have the guys here from Fantasy Flight who are doing uh, demonstrations. And this is Infinity, um, or as some people call it, the Anti 40K. <laughs> a lot of guys who started playing this uh, for 40K kind of got a little too expensive for them, but uh, looks neat. A lot of terrain. Uh, it looks like for this type of game system. 
So if you like a lot of terrain and uh, skirmish uh, science fiction type combat, this is a great game system for you. Alright, and this is the uh, 40k room. As you can see, probably one of the largest uh, rooms here. Probably the most popular uh, tournament here at Nova. Really cool looking, different types of space creatures and such. Even got <laughs> even got it up on the big screen there. I guess have somebody doing a podcast. These, uh, I want to say these are Tyranids, but it's really cool LED lighting. That is really cool. That's somebody who has a lot more talent than I do. These are cool too. These are, I want to say they're Tau. All right, now here's a really cool 40K train piece. I don't know if this is supposed to be some sort of Imperium, fortress, whatever you want to call it, bunker. You got your anti-aircraft here. Really cool, really cool texture on this too. Some sort of sand. I mean, it really looks like another planet. Really, really well done. Okay, two hours later, we are finally set up. And this is the relief of Helm's Deep playing with War of the Ring. 3,000 points aside, and this scenario actually is in the point of the book. This is the book scenario, it's not the movie scenario. Uh, but there are some elements from the movie uh, that are in the scenario. Uh, first off, Urkenbrand arrives on cavalry. Um, if you read the book, you know that it was actually infantry, but in both the Bakshi film as well as the Peter Jackson film, he came in on cavalry, and it's also, I don't have any other infantry models, but I have plenty of cavalry, because it's Rohan, right? So, uh, and let's see, over here, we have Helm's Deep itself. Now, also according to the book, uh, Gimli and Eremir were at the breach of uh, the Deeping Wall, and Thaden rode out with his guard. And Legolas, it's not really clear where Legolas was at this point in the battle, so I stuck him up there with the archers. Now, what I did with the evil side is that I gave each uh, evil player uh, uh, one of each unit, right? So, like for example, here we have orc eye warriors, as well as Isengard orcs, as well as archers, uh, as well as some berserkers here, and a ballista. So every player, if we get uh, uh, eight players on, or actually four players on the evil side, they'll each have shooting attacks, they'll have uh, regular fights, uh, as well as uh, two players will have artillery. So we're gonna have two players if we get four for the good side. Two players on this side here, two players bringing in the cavalry uh, over on the far flank. So it all depends on who shows up. This is uh, what's called a critical mass event. Uh, which means uh, whoever wants to play can go ahead and play. And uh, we, at least got, we at least got the first player. This is Adam from Blackfire Productions, Blackfire Productions yeah. on YouTube. So if you want to go ahead and check out his channel on YouTube called Blackfire Productions, uh, Adam was here playing in the Strategy Battle Game Tournament. Yeah, that's And right. you were actually from Canada. We're from Canada, yeah. There's myself, two other guys that drove up on Thursday and uh, it took us 12 hours, but we're here to meet everybody in the community here, make connections, and hopefully have it grow even more, right? Right. So how are you doing in the tournament? Uh, the doubles tournament, I came away with two wins and a, a tie, uh, but points-wise, I wasn't in the standings. Uh, and then, so far, I have two wins and a loss uh, today. Uh, points-wise, I'm still within eligibility for placing, but we'll see how it goes. And you're playing tomorrow, right? I am playing tomorrow, both, uh, both rounds. So. All right. Now, have you played War of the Ring before? I played it when it first came out. I played it like two or three times. Not much, obviously. Um, and so it's going to be uh, all new to me because it's been a while. So you're going to give it a go? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, glad I'll to have you. I'll just play a lot setup in that. And, uh, yeah, I'm definitely interested to check it out. So. All right. Let me go ahead and check in with our tournament organizers. Let them know that we're going to start. 
and uh, we'll wait and see who shows up. If not, it might just be me and Adam. Yeah. All right, and welcome back, everyone. This is actually Sunday, the last day of uh, the Nova Open. Uh, the uh, Helm's Deep game is where we had it. It went well. Uh, we had about six players. Um, Evil won, uh, which is a little different than the way we play tested it. Um, but we had most people who played War of the Ring before and they knew all the epic actions and uh, how to really use your epic heroes and that. So for new players who didn't know all that, um, they're, they're, they were struggling a little bit and Evil just had numbers on them. So, but it was fun. I, I think everybody enjoyed it. Uh, so they're just wrapping up the uh, tournament right now. And I think uh, they got some display boards over here. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of these. I think they're in the process of judging them. So here we have uh, an Urukai army. What else? It's actually a Boromir there, right? Yeah. And Galadriel. Uh, dwarf army, they're in the middle of judging right now, so. Over here we have Minas Tirith with a Gondor army. You can see Knights of Dal Amroth there, as well as the Clansmen of Lamedin. Different paint scheme they got on them. I want to squeeze by the judge here and take a look here. I think we have, uh, okay, we have Mirkwood Elves. Very interesting Grandel model there. Interesting highlight we're using on the cloak. And over here we have John. Looks like Rivendell Knights. Very well done. And Easterlings. I just put some of these Easterlings together this morning. They are a absolute pain to put together for plastic bottles. You have to like individually put on the uh, the um, quiver of bows, uh, and they don't really stay on the base that well. So this is a really good job I heard did that. And these are high elves here. Some people say, oh, here's some roses and an eagle. As well as some ants, the uh, Forgotten Kingdom's army. As well, this is, seems to be a parrot army they're setting up. A couple pirates back there, so I guess they're real corsairs. And this is a Minus Morgul army. Very well done. And then we have a looks like a Baradur army. You have some trolls, some Brandon orcs, and then we have an old Ringwraith army right here. So nasty. If you fight these guys, particularly in War of the Ring. SPG, uh, actually this guy, he came in uh, second uh, in the tournament. Um, it was uh, one of the guys from the Great British Hollywood League who uh, took it over. So why don't we go ahead and wait around for the award ceremony. All right, so here are the uh, results of the uh, tournaments. With 59 kills goes to Brian Killian. He got a prize of his choice from the vendor section of any type. And uh, he's chosen Easterlings. So cool. he now has a prize at Easterling Army. He is now going to start. So with the second thing. A lot of you guys are hungry, so um, go ahead. Here, you're good. So next, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and give out the best painted award. Now the award only goes really to the top person, but I'm gonna tell you the top three. So in third place of all those beautiful terrain boards and everything, all the armies, we have James Clark. Oh. Uh -huh. 
40 points. Damian O'Brien. The two guys <laughs>